welcome to the Dental Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kara Dent, and I have this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create A teams. Welcome to the Dental A Team Podcast. Hello, Dental A Team listeners. This is Kira, and you guys, happy day to you. I hope today is just a magical day for you. And I want to say thanks. Thanks for being awesome, awesome, awesome listeners to the podcast. Thanks for being part of my Dental A Team family. You guys, when I made this podcast, gosh, I did not expect it to turn into this. And I just want to say, uh, it's really fun to connect with people all across the globe, to know that we're touching your lives, to get to talk to you when you call in to be Dental Team clients, uh, to see you on social media interacting with us. And for those of you who are more like me, sometimes more silent observers, I just want to let you know that I see you, that I appreciate you, that I really do just honor you and and what you do for our dental community. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for those of you who have left us reviews, have shared. I love reading those. Like I said, I can't sleep sometimes. And when I can't sleep, I go look at podcast reviews. So guys, thanks for just making my day. Every time you, you share this, it really is so magical when I see you guys on social media sharing a podcast. So please keep that up. That's going to help us get our 1 million downloads this year uh, just to help positively impact the world of dental. So if you haven't done so, I'm going to encourage you to go do so and just know it truly does mean the world to me. So guys, today, quick, quick podcast. I've got limited time, so it's going to be coming to you hot, but I am so excited about this podcast. And that is the art of decisiveness. So I heard a quote, I was at a conference and it said, someone told me, I don't even know where this quote came from. So I'm quoting somebody that's not me. And they said, more is lost through indecision than a wrong decision. And I have thought about this. It was, you know, how sometimes like it's like a lightning bolt and it just hits you and it sticks with you. And this is a zone probably because I need it. And that's why I call that the art of decisiveness. It's not something where I think we instantly one day wake up and we're super decisive. I think it truly is an art. It's something where we have to realize that sometimes making a wrong decision is a right decision because it executes and moves us forward so much faster. There was a great book. Guys, I should just pull these out. I'm like being the worst giving credit. I'm saying it's in a book. So Google this. Uh, But I remember they were talking about how uh, I think it was at the White House and they came in and there was a decision made and it was like a 30 second conversation. They're like, nope, we're going to do this. And the board said, like, how do you know? Like, you haven't even thought about it. You haven't looked at the projections. You haven't looked at this, this and this. And uh, whomever was in office at this time turned around and said, you're right, but more will be learned if it's a wrong decision and if it's a right decision, we're going to move forward. And I just loved that thought process of sometimes the answer is just decide. We can sit here all day long and willy nilly along and think about it and draw things. I will say you've got to have your resources and your information, but at the same time, So many people are so afraid to make a decision and hold to it that we actually are creating a huge damage within our practice. So doctors, so many office managers come to me and complain and like, if my doctor would just give me a decision, it would help us move forward. But instead I put it on their desk and I'm waiting and I give them a no and a reminder and a reminder and a reminder. And then they just stop asking. Just think if you would have made a decision. You're right. Sometimes it would be wrong, but more is going to be learned from that wrong decision than not making a decision. And yes, there are some things legally, I do take my time on legal things. However, I believe it's an art because as you start to make more and more decisions, as you start to build that muscle and that skill of deciding and deciding quickly, you're going to actually be able to trust yourself more consistently because you're going to have data to show, hey, when I made that decision like this, it was not the best outcome. So we're going to make decisions like, this. I also think creating processes for how we do it. Instead of going off of gut instinct when we hire, 
do you have a process of we go through this, this, and this? You guys, Dental A Team has a hiring course. So if you need a process for hiring, head on over to the dentalateam.com or become one of our clients and get access to it. So with that, like, do you have a documented process for how you hire or do we go off of gut instinct? A lot of time decisions feel like they have to be made on gut instinct, not because we haven't been there before, but because we haven't taken the time to write them down, to document them. So that way it's no longer a gut instinct or just going off of a feeling, but there's actually a process to these decisions. So I would just ask you of when you are making decisions in your practice, do you have set processes in place or is it more gut? complete transparency. I'm more gut in our, in our company. This is why Shelby and I are looking for somebody to come in to help us get all these processes in play. Certain people think in processes. I do not. I think in emotions. I think in very, oh, gut (laughs) is what I think in. Well, that makes it very hard to make decisions oftentimes, but I also feel that that's an excuse. It's not a true reality. That's me not having discipline of writing down these so I can make stronger, better decisions. We do have a process for how we write ads. I don't have to sit and approve every single ad that we post. I don't have to approve a lot of things anymore. The decision's been made. So now how do we ensure it gets executed consistently? How many of you would just love to DIY and get the secrets of people who have been there, done that on your own time? Because I know for me, I love to learn from the best of the best, the people who have been there, done that, and can give me the shortcuts. That's why we have created our Dental A-Team Virtual Academy, where it's on-demand courses for you at your fingertips, where you literally can learn the secrets from all of my experience, all of Tiffany's experience, Brittany, Dana, our entire team's experience at your fingertips. So stop taking the hard route, guys. There's a shortcut sitting there waiting for you, and it's also CE. Head on over to thedentalateam.com and click on our virtual academy. Be sure to use coupon code podcast and get started on that DIY and become the practice of your dreams. So that's why I put it in here of the art of decisiveness. And I feel like when making decisions, we need to think it out. Then we need to weigh the pros and cons. And then we need to act. So really it's not like you just have to get the information. Then you have to think of other options and then execute. So Really, I mean, a quick Google search, I found step seven steps to effective decision making. This is a quick Google. UMass Dartmouth is where it came from. It says, identify the decision, gather information, identify alternatives, weigh the evidence, choose among alternatives, take action, review your decision. There are so many things that require decisions, but I think being decisive is a, is a habit. It's something that we develop over time and it's a muscle almost that we build. So office managers start practicing making decisions. Leads of practices start practicing making decisions and speaking up. Have that healthy conflict where you weigh the the options back and forth. That way you can truly move forward and feel confident in those decisions. I really do believe it's an art of decisiveness. It's an art of to be able to make decisions and make them consistently. It's an art for you guys to feel confident in the decisions you're making. So what I'd suggest with this is number one, let's commit right now that we are actually going to be decisive. Let's just commit right now that we're going to do it. Let's commit that no matter what happens, we're gonna make a decision. So my husband was great, he's gotta make a decision, it's a pretty big decision, and he said, I have to make this decision in 48 hours. I loved that he gave himself a timeline of when that decision needed to be made. I often do that. I say, okay, perfect. I need to get some information. I will have a decision made by this date. The problem that I struggle with that I'm going to tell you guys is my weakness and hopefully you can learn from it is oftentimes when I make a decision, I go back and revisit it. I second guess myself. And so my new standard is when I make a decision, I stick with it. I don't change because that's oftentimes in practices where we get so loosey goosey. And for me, I can rationalize it and justify it and say, well, guys, I just didn't know. And I didn't have all the data, but that makes it hard for a team to trust me. If I'm constantly changing my mind, a lot of doctors that we work with, they will constantly change the rules of the game. So the team stops listening. They stop thinking and trusting that whatever is said is actually going to move forward. That is not a good space to be in doctors and office managers. We've lost the trust of our team. So we need to get it back. And the way you get it back is by making a decision and sticking with it. 
guess what, guys? More is lost through indecision than a wrong decision. So let's think of the decision you need to make today. Okay, think of a big one for me. Haha, <laughs> it's who we're gonna hire. <laughs> That's my big decision that we're we're weighing out. We have so many different possibilities. So what I need to do is gather the information. I probably should also set a timeline before I even gather that information. So by the end of the week, I need to have a clear map of who I'm going to hire. That means I need to weigh out, I need to run the projections, I need to talk to coaches, I need to talk to mentors, I need to do some research. But this is a decision I'm going to make for the next three months. Guess what? I might make the wrong hire. I might overpay. I might underpay. I might underhire. But guess what? The decision's made and we can all move forward. We're ro- getting ready to roll out a, process, a whole product. Guess what? That thing has been circled around so many times. But I think the reason why is because we didn't actually take the time to weigh the options, look at alternatives, set that we are going to do this. And then the next piece to being decisive is creating an action plan for success. So sometimes we make a decision. For example, we're going to drop Delta Dental. Okay, by when? We need to have a date. When are we going to do that? It's going to be done by September 7th. Perfect, so we've got about five months before we need to have this done. Excellent, what are the steps from A to Z to ensure that we have a successful dropping of Delta Dental? Let's work backwards to ensure this is successful. The decision was made, we're dropping Delta Dental. I'm not saying you have to, I'm just saying this is an example, it's a practice I'm just uh, excited to welcome to our team. Um, But if they're going to do that, we need to have a date made and then we need to figure out who's doing what. For me, I need to have a decision of who we're going to hire. Then at that point, I can put dates around it. So there's two different dates that we're putting in. I hope this is coming through to you guys correctly. And that is number one, we need to have the date of when the decision will be made. And then once the decision is made, when are those things going to roll out if applicable? So for example, dropping Delta Dental, hiring a hygienist. Um, We know we need to bring on a new office manager. We know we need to Uh, have better room setups, or we know we need to get a better supply budget in place. Well, if I need to get you a supply budget, I've got to have a date of when that's going to be made and how long we're going to run this. Those are the decisions. So that's why guys, I want you to start thinking of how can you be more decisive? How can you start to make decisions with more confidence? The more I make decisions, the more confident I get. Even if I make a wrong decision, that's okay. I'm going to learn a lot more from that decision than I will from not making a decision. So have your team get better at creating these decisions. Have your team get better at deciding. Commit today that you are gonna be a practice that decides and takes massive action. Guys, there is more loss through indecision than a wrong decision. So make those decisions, figure out the one you need to do, set a date of when you'll have that decision made that you don't go back on, and then execute. Let me know, guys, if you need help with this, email us hello at thedentallyteam.com. I'm excited for you guys to try it out. Let me know how it goes. And as always, thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time on the Dentally Team Podcast. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dentally Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.